My name is Angelo and welcome to We Want Picks. I'm going to give you my bets for UFC Vegas 83. But before I do, let me give you $50. The only thing you need to do is go to wewantpicks.com slash bets, sign up with any one of our betting partners using our links, and I will send you $50 as a thank you. It's affiliate marketing. They're going to pay me. So you're going to go to wewantpicks.com slash bets. You're going to use the link, go out to their website, make an account, make a deposit. They're going to pay me. I'm going to take off some of that money and I'm going to give it right back to you. Wewantpicks.com slash bets. Use the links, sign up. We send you 50 bucks as a thank you. And while I'm in the giving mood, I'm going to try to give you $1,000. We're doing a $1,000 giveaway. It is 100% free to enter, and it'll probably take you fewer than two minutes to actually enter into this. The only thing you need to do is subscribe to the Pix Nation YouTube channel. Subscribe to the We Want Picks YouTube channel and comment on the giveaway video so that when we use a random comment picker, your comment is there for us to grab. As long as we hit our subscriber goals, which we're going to hit the We Want Picks goal this week, next week. That's a no-brainer. As long as Picks Nation gets the 10,000 subscribers, which it should, right? If we've got 20,000 on the big channel, we should get the 10 on the small channel, no problem. As long as we hit those goals, I will give you $500. If you happen to be a premium member, I will give you $1,000. We're going to double it. You click subscribe twice, you leave a little comment. That's the end of this. And we send you money. All the links to do that are below. And premium membership is going to get you far more than just double your money on an end of year giveaway. You're going to get tools like the line movement tracker. Listen, anybody can throw up a Twitter account, make a YouTube account, click four buttons, have a Patreon, and then put a couple of bets on there. And I've seen both extremes. I see people that put a handful of bets, albeit thoughtful bets, but like four, five. And I've seen people put hundreds of bets, just a, a list, a running scroll, like a medieval scroll of just bets. Both of those things are not worth the money. Of course you want the bets and we're gonna give you the bets. We're gonna give you the picks. We're gonna give you the round line leans. We're gonna give you that for seven people, not just myself, but Jacob, Artem, the Running Mouth crew, MMA Minute, you're going to get that from all of us, but you're also going to get tools. One of those tools is the line movement tracker. This is going to give you the opening odds, the current odds, the win probability, and the line movement for every single fighter on every single card to help you identify trends and potentially help you stay away from some bets that don't make sense. Two fighters on this card went from underdog to favorite. That line steamed. They full-blown flipped. Last card, both of those people won. You're also going to get the detailed data metrics and analytics. This is 38 columns of information that will help you specifically, in my opinion, with prop bets. Especially, more specifically, every week, DraftKings and Bet Online drop takedown prop bets, significant strike prop bets. If you do some daily fantasy, like prize picks or underdog, this can help you with that as well. You can very quickly see how many significant strikes is somebody landing. How many takedowns is somebody averaging? What is their opponent's takedown defense? How many strikes does their opponent get hit with? And you can have all that data right in front of you to help you find your spots to jump into some bets when bet online, DraftKings, Prize Picks, Underdog, when they get their lines wrong or they set a takedown line too high, boom, hit the under. When they set the significant strike line super low because your guy's typically low volume, but you know the opponent gets hit like a freight train, perfect. There's your spot. All of that data, information, insight, these tools, seven analysts worth of information is available to you with one click. Just go to wewantpicks.com, click become a member at the top. It is only $10 a month. Of course, picks, bets, round line leans, all of that, but all of the tools as well. And that's just for the betting. We have a full fantasy offering on top of that, every single thing that we do is included. We want picks.com. Click become a member at the top. Let's go ahead and talk about this card specifically. This is an interesting card. Last week was wild, wild. The underdogs that won last week were absolutely insane. Some incredible, as a fan, those fights were incredible. As somebody trying to find value spots, it was a little trickier than that. We were right there though. The, I, I would have been profitable last week if I didn't convince myself at the last minute, eh, Wellington Terman's probably good. I would have been profitable. But instead, I did convince myself after saying all week long, you can't trust the guy. You can't trust him. After saying that all week long, Friday came around. I was like, nah, right. No, yeah, go, go ahead. Right, Jared, come on. 
and then that screwed me. But this week, far more controlled. Let's talk about some of my more confident favorites on this card. I think Song Yidong. I think he smokes in the main event. I think he's the better striker. I think he hits harder. I think he's going to be the better wrestler. We know he's at Team Alpha Male. And yes, Chris Gutierrez has phenomenal low leg kicks, and he could potentially light up Song's legs, slow him down, cause some issues there. But I think this is a matchup on purpose to help boost Song Yidong. And if you remember, this card was supposed to be in Shanghai, and Song was headlining it. So they knew what they were doing when they made this matchup. I'm pretty confident in him. Mel Costa, minus 260. Last week, when this fight was originally booked, I was like, Melk should win, but his opponent, Steve Garcia, very tough underdog. Good underdog. I had him in the solid underdog's bracket. But he went to the hospital. Didn't make it to the scale. He ended up in the hospital. Yes, we're a week later. They seem to have fixed whatever the hell was going on. And now he's fighting again. I am more confident in Melk this week. I have removed Steve Garcia as a solid underdog because I think in order to win that fight, he needed to be a dog. He needed to come forward, have all his cardio, all his energy, and just stay in Melk Costa's face. I just can't imagine a hospital say seven days earlier is really going to set you up for success, even if they did give you a little bit of extra weight for the scale. So Melk Costa back on the confident list. Tatsuro Tyra, his line flew. He was minus 500 just two days ago. Now he's minus 625. That's a good amount of movement in two days. And nothing meaningful happened. It's not like we heard some news. But I think the line movement makes sense. I think Tatsuro Tyra comes forward, gets his takedowns. His opponent is pretty takedownable. Gets his takedowns. Potentially gets a finish. Pretty confident Tatsuro Tyra. Kevin Gisette at minus 145. I think he bullies Kanan Song. I think he bullies him. I think he comes forward, he closes the distance, removes all that big boy power, and then probably gets him to the ground or touches him up in the clinch. But either way, I think Kevin Gissette's going to get that done. He's going to be bigger. He's going to be stronger. And as long as he avoids the power, he will be good. And then Tim Elliott, short notice, underdog Tim Elliott. He's not an underdog in this matchup, but you know he's like a perpetual underdog. This guy is always thrown to the wolves. He finally has a matchup that he can win. It is on short notice. But I do think Tim Elliott comes forward and I think he gets it done. He fought Muhammad Makhayev in his last fight. And if you look at the judges' scorecards, he was going to win that fight. And before some turd comments, open your eyes, he wasn't winning that fight. I am speaking in objective facts. Tim Elliott was up 2-0 going into the third round on the official judges' scorecard. This is public. Google it. You can see the scorecards. He was finished in the third round, but if he somehow survived just a touch longer, Tim Elliott was going to win a decision. I wouldn't have agreed with the decision. I thought Tim was losing, but he was about to win a decision in that fight. But the point being, this guy shows up. He is relentless. He comes forward. He wrestles hard. He stays aggressive. He does all the things that you want a fighter to do. He specifically said in the press conference, I need to be a little safer than I normally am. I need to be a little more patient than I normally am because Sudamergy is a pretty dangerous guy. He can snatch something up in a scramble, but I think Tim Elliott's going to come forward, head down, wrestle, grapple, grind, and then absolutely get it done. He's only minus 133 right now. That feels like incredible value. Uh, you're going to see my bets in a minute. I did not get that value. A couple of underdogs. Talita Allencar. Talita Allencar is a world-level grappler. She has won every single meaningful tournament on this planet. She is a phenomenal, phenomenal grappler. Striking kind of sucks, but she is strong, and she can grapple, and she can come forward and bully it to the ground. Personally, I think her opponent's takedown defense is very, very good, and I think it may hold up. But at plus 125 in an underdog spot, Talita Allencar is one of the better underdogs on this card, especially if you're one of the few people that are like, yeah, women's MMA. Well, here you go. Here's an underdog in a debut versus another debuting fighter with a wild skill gap on the ground. Then we have Jamie Malarkey at plus 161. I think Jamie Malarkey can win this fight. I think he can come forward, stay in Nazrat's face, use the wrestling, use the volume striking, use all of that to get it done. Nazrat at one point was a highly touted prospect with big power in wrestling. He doesn't use his wrestling. The power seems to have vanished into thin air. He just got pieced up by a short notice UFC debut. I think Jamie Malarkey can be tough, could potentially win this fight. And then the last solid underdog, I'm going to go against the grain here and say Andre Muniz. I picked against him. I still think he loses, but... 
Skill wise, he's a very, very good fighter. His striking is solid. It's technical, at least. There's a little bit of power there. His grappling is world level. And he shoots real takedowns. He's not pulling guard. He shoots real takedowns. Problem is, we've seen him quit. He does have a quit button and he has pressed it. Most recently against Paul Craig, who also kind of sucks, which I think is swaying myself and a lot of others. But Jun Young Park, his opponent, isn't like this world beater. He is on a three-fight win streak, a three-submission win streak. He has been putting together some solid wins, making things happen. But Andre Muniz is a different animal. I don't know if he's a guy that John Young Park's going to instantly want to take down. Either way, I still think Muniz loses. But at plus 142, a guy that just one year ago in this exact same matchup would have been a favorite is probably worth a look for a lot of you underdog chasers. Let's look at my actual bets. I mentioned the... Uh, I didn't get the best value on Tim Elliott. I, I bet it the very second that that line dropped. They dropped the line and said, boom, Tim Elliott. I think he's going to win this fight. He's going to be busy, blah, 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 blah. All the things. Minus 180. That has tightened. You saw he's minus 133 right now. I, I can't believe it. I, I honestly am surprised. I thought I was going to widen. His wrestling is nonstop. Obviously, I think people are uh, afraid of the short notice, but I did not get great value on that, which tells you if we go back a slide, that at minus 133, you're going to get minus 117 if you do it at bed openly. That's almost even money. That's some incredible value for Tim Elliott. I also have the Smith Roundtree fight over one and a half rounds. Yes, I fully recognize that Khalil Roundtree is very dangerous. But Anthony Smith is one of the toughest dudes that has ever existed in this sport. Period. End of story. That is a plus money over. So I only threw a half a unit on it because... They are light heavyweights. They are throwing hard. Both of them can finish or be finished. Smith was nearly finished in his last fight. But I think the over one and a half is the safer play for sure. Roundtree, scary, dangerous, fast, all those things. But Anthony Smith is so insanely tough that I think he could survive, even if it's a one-sided beating for seven and a half minutes. Jamie Malarkey, plus three and a half points. If you don't know what that is, I'm buying points on the judge's scorecard. It's the equivalent of betting the spread in another sport. The way the math works out is as long as Jamie Malarkey, he can, he can win the fight, he can lose a split decision, or he can lose a unanimous 29-28. As long as he wins one round on all three judges' scorecards and makes it to the end, then we get paid on this bet. And I think that's exactly the type of fight we can get. I could see Nazrat lighten him up for two rounds, give up the third round because Jamie's just busy and in his face. Plus 170, that was nearly the money line odds. If we go back, Jamie Malarkey's money line odds right now are plus 161. I got better value on a safer bet just two days ago. If you're a premium member, or three days ago, maybe. If you're a premium member, you saw that bet. You also saw the Tim Elliott one where the value sucked, but you saw this one where the value was incredible. So make sure if you're a premium member, you link the Discord for alerts. You can check those out. If you like a bet, great. If you don't, that's fine too. But at least you saw it and you didn't miss out. Then I uh, combined Luana Santos and Kevin Jusset. I have two parlays that I called risky favorites. I separated them out. I think Luana Santos is literally going to be younger, faster. All the things. All the things over Stephanie Egger. Except just experience and raw strength. But I do think youth I think grappling, I think her striking, it's not great, but she'll bomb. I think all of those things should give her the edge. Kevin just said, I already broke down. I think he's going to bully his way to a win. This is a plus 135 parlay. And then I had a very unfortunate drop. We had Jun Yun Park, who I do think wins. I talked about Andre Muniz being a good underdog. This parlay is called the Risky Favorites for a reason. Jun Yun Park and Alan Nascimento. I had much better odds than this. But Nascimento dropped. Jun Yun Park is... The only leg of this parlay. So that basically turned this into a money line bet on John Young Park, which I never would have done. You parlay it, you get some solid money. Two guys I thought could win would be a little risky. Good odds. Great. I did that. But that's nice mental drop, and now I'm stuck with that. And the last one I have is a uh, little bit of a parlay here. We have Mel Costa. I mentioned I'm more confident in Mel Costa this week than I was last week, specifically because of that hospitalization. And then I took the Suman Energy and Tim Elliott fight over one and a half rounds. So I parlayed that round prop 
and a money line, and we get plus 113. Tim Elliott is not a guy that just goes out there and gets finishes immediately. And Suman Ergy, unless he catches his catches his, his, his unless he catches Tim in a scramble, he also is not going to be putting his lights out early. I see Tim just crotch sniffing, diving at legs, wet blanketing to a decision. So over one and a half felt pretty easy. And then Mel Kosu, I'm confident in. I have five units on the board. If all of these hit, then I more than double my money. I get it to over 10 units. And let's not forget about the safety parlay. It missed last week. It did not hit last week. Cody Brundage just slammed his way right through the safety parlay. But if we zoom out and we look at the big picture, first of all, betting on UFC, UFC is the most volatile sport to bet on. It just is. But if we zoom out and we look at the safety parlay, we'll see that we hit four of the last six events. The average monthly profit is over one and a half units from this one single bet alone. And the event accuracy, and I have it as event accuracy because some events I have two or even three safety parlays, the event accuracy is over 70%. So if you have 10 events in a row, three of them will be profitable with the safety parlay. You can unlock this and everything else that I mentioned earlier at wewantpicks.com. Just click become a member at the top. You're also gonna unlock all of Jacob's bets. I wanna give you a sample he has six plus active units right now. He had multiple bets on two different fights that were canceled. He had Alan Nascimento, and then he had that other one that was just canceled yesterday. I forget the name. But he has six active units right now. Jamie Malarkey, money line, plus 185. That's the value that Jacob got earlier in the week. And then he also has a round prop parlay. He had Garcia Costa and Smith Roundtree, both of those to go over one and a half rounds at plus 282. I think personally, I think that's a phenomenal bet. Garcia Costa, that should go. We should get past one and a half there. And I already have the Smith Roundtree separately, and that should go. So plus 282 for that bet, I think is absolutely incredible. But if you want to see the rest of his bets, we want picks.com. Click become a member at the top. It's only $10 a month. And let's talk about bet openly. You saw it on the very first slide. The, the odds that they offer are absolutely spectacular. The reason being is they are not a sports book. It's peer-to-peer -peer betting. It's you versus me. If I win, I take your money. You win, you take my actual money. It is not you versus the house. There is no house. It's person versus person. So if you want to take your chance at separating Jacob from his actual money, you can take the anti-lock of the week bet, meaning you'll take Nazareth Hackbrast, or if you want to take my money, we have an anti-safety parlay bet. My safety parlay is up. You grab the other side. And the way parlays work is you just need it to break. You don't need both of my fighters to lose. Just one of them loses and you get paid. Guys, check out Bet Openly. You can go to wewantpicks.com slash betopenly or you can just go to Bet Openly directly. But peer-to-peer -peer betting, the odds are going to be better every single time because they don't care if you win or lose. They just want you there using the platform where a casino, a sports book, They'll juice lines. They have to build in the margin so that even if you win, you notice an even money fight is minus 110, minus 110. That's because they have they need to make sure that they make money. So they take 10%. Anyway, check out Bet Openly and then get your $50. We want picks.com slash bets. Sign up, make a deposit, use our link for all of that, and we will send you 50 bucks as a thank you. It's affiliate marketing. They're gonna pay me. I'm going to slice off some of that money and I'm going to give it right back to you.